Well, well, well. New Year's podcast episode three. This is becoming a annual tradition for us here at True Footy Busher. At what point does a tradition become a tradition? I don't know. It's just the third time we've done it, so yeah. I feel like it's getting that way. I'd like to make it a tradition. I feel like it's a good, it's a good off-season fodder because yeah. uh, obviously the draft was earlier this month, yep. and we've done pretty much stuff all since. I think I've done a couple of potties with some YouTuber guests, yep. but. Other than that, I've kind of just been soaking up some holiday time. My sister's been in town from overseas, so okay. just kind of been taking a seat. You just picked May up from the bloody ferry terminal. Just I just got back from Rotto. That's a euphemism. Of course, today we are recording this on New Year's Eve, Busher. Yep. So what are your plans tonight? Are you doing anything? Going to Seasons at the Wacker Mart. Oh, at the Wacker? Yeah, it's at the Wacker. Really? Yeah. Oh, I just, didn't I just read that they're, um, they're redeveloping the Wacker, doing like a $30 million like a redevelopment of the Probably, Wacker. I think yeah. they're going to make it like a big sports ground, but I don't know... Yeah. What sports will be there? I guess cricket makes sense. Yeah, I don't know the logistics of it, but yeah, I think they are doing something. Yeah. Well, it'll be just interesting to see how that... Maybe that, that opens the door for um, that third WA AFL team that I know you really want. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Well, we... Um, well, today, like, we will probably just do a re- relaxed conversational New Year's podcast. Like, that's what yeah. we've done in the previous years because there's no actual footage to talk about. Um, as we said before, the draft... Like, remember last year we did a full post-draft analysis podcast and, uh, and then we got, like, some negative comments because we, admittedly, it was a pretty average job we did, uh, like, if you remember. So, I, I remember this year we made this, like, big goal. We were like, we're going to re- redo this draft podcast um, this year, make it a really good one because last year's was just really boring and dry. And the year before uh, that, we did it for, like, two hours. Um, <laughs> three. And then, and then this year we didn't even do one. Uh, <laughs> but I did do the We did the streams. Race. The streams of probably reaction yeah, to the... There's only so much you can say. I, yeah. guess. I, I mean, I did those live streams myself, and that was like five hours of content. Uh, so, yeah, I guess I guess I can't plenty of analysis there. Too much up, but we would have actually had a little bit more to talk about Busher had we gone on that AFL course that we were originally going to do. I'm still devastated about that. Yeah, for those, not enough numbers. That's right. So, uh, yeah, I don't think we told anyone in the Discord or anything, or we've mentioned it on the channel, but yeah, um, this is the first mention. Yeah, a few weeks ago, the uh, on the AFL website they had a article which was basically just placed advertisement targeted advertising to um which we ate up oh yeah we fell for it completely yeah. no no uh <laughs> it was about how people can get into the afl recruiting industry so yeah. specifically list management as well list management yeah. and recruiting through the draft and stuff like that and it was released right before the draft and they advertised these afl sports ready courses where we could actually become accredited recruiters um and or list managers yeah. so busher and i enrolled the course was going to be in Queensland by with Brad Lloyd, yep. brother of the great man Matthew, uh, former Fremantle list manager, now with Carlton. Yep. Um, we paid our thousand dollars to enrol, booked our flights, and they canned it because not enough people showed up. So that was a bit of a devastating. Yeah. At least we got free flights somewhere next year because we couldn't get refunded for those. That's it. So we got the course refunded, but uh, yeah, now we have to we have a credit on these flights. So do you think it's something you do again? Shit no. Shit. N- oh, it sounded like knife. you said shit no. <laughs> shit no. Okay, what appeals yeah. to you about the course, Bush? It's just like the short term, it's like relevant experience. Like I even figured my worst case scenario with it, even if it goes nowhere with like AFL or anything, it gives me more solid knowledge when I'm talking on the podcast. Mm. Like even knowledge of collective bargaining agreements and stuff like that's good professional experience sort of thing. That's true. And it, even a resume stuff, like worst case scenario. Yeah. Best case scenario, I'm... Um, get some sick job with the AFL or something. But w- worst case scenario, we have a romantic weekend away in Queensland. Like we were Exactly. It would have so. been fun anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah so the same thing for me. Like, uh, obviously, other than this channel, we don't really have any other links to the AFL industry. We're sort of like in yeah. our own makeshift AFL wannabe yeah. media at the moment. So yeah. it would have been nice to sort of get your foot in the door. Bit at of least networking. Bit of AFL on the resume as well. Yeah. And of course, you and I both, both love like list management and recruiting yeah. and stuff like that. Um, so that would and the been salary caps that convoluted and confusing. It'd be good to have a proper understanding of the intricacies of it. Yeah, well, one of the uh, they take you right through the CBA apparently in the course material, and also uh, what was it? I think even like all about trading and future picks and stuff like that, and all the yeah. complicated stuff. Because I I must admit, even though I've always considered myself a footy nerd, the the whole points stuff like now I understand the system, yeah. but like I don't. I, I have a superficial understanding. I yeah, describe my understanding. As, exactly, uh, like, but I need it sort of displayed to me what's going yeah. on. I don't, I don't want to do the math myself. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So it would be it was it would have been really cool to um to have that broken down to really take this channel to the next step. But alas, hopefully in twenty twenty 
um, we'll get another crack at it. I guess it was ambitious for us to, or for them to do a course in December in Queensland. Yeah. Why Queensland? That's the other thing. Yeah, that's probably the big one. A lot of, most people doing the course probably be Victorian based, maybe a few South Aussies, a couple mm. of West Aussies. Yeah. yeah. I think they needed at least 15 people for it to go ahead and they mustn't have even got that. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. yeah. But yeah I mean, in December as well, I guess yeah. people would, Wrapping up for the year. Right after the draft. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Interesting. But um, perhaps we can reflect on the year we've had at True Footy. I was doing a little bit of research for this potty, even though we said it was going to be relaxed. I was looking through um, everything we've done this year. It's incredible how far the channel's actually come this year. I'd forgotten how much had happened this year. Uh, I don't know. I got to admit, I was watching the two New Year's Eve potties just to get in the flow for this one today. And then I went to the about on our channel and it said we had like, Total views, 800,000 over. Yeah, wow. Total views, and that just blew my mind, to be honest. I was like, yeah. it's going to be a million probably sometime next year. Yeah, you think so. Which is absurd. Yeah, it really is, considering how shit we are. <laughs> no, but um, I guess for me as well, just like, to think at the start of the year, I'd never done a weekly tips video, uh, and then I ended up doing like 20 of them throughout the year. like 20 out of 23 months. I, I yeah, would have done Europe. all of them, surely. I I, Europe. Yeah, Europe, exactly. Yeah, yeah fair yeah, enough. But yeah. then there was five. I can forgive you for that then. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I took a whole month off and the channel still really grew, which was awesome. Uh, but I think at the start of the year, we I think we hit 1,000 subs last December. So it's been a year and we gained 5,300 uh, 5, subs in that time. I was even saying this thing, sorry to cut you off, but it was like an, it was a bigger YouTuber and it was like their growth rate. Oh, I, no, no, sorry. It wasn't in it was YouTube. It was Billie Eilish. It was like her social media. Okay. From like when she's like 17 to like 19. Mm-hmm. She started 17 with like a few hundred thousand. Now she's got like 60 million followers on Instagram or some shit. So, uh, and it showed like the growth year to year. Like it's exponential sort of thing once you yeah. get the ball rolling. That's true. That's so that's true. a reason for optimism. Yeah. I mean, I think we, we actually kind of flattened in the second half of the year. The first yeah. half of the year was ridiculous. We got to 5,000 really quickly and then 5,000 to six and a bit now. Yeah. It's been pretty slow, but... It's off um, season to be fair. But to think about the stuff... Um, I, I did True Footy Reacts for the first time this year and that's like, I've stopped doing that because I think I'm just going to rejig the format with that one because yeah. uh, it got too much to do the, that and a weekly video uh, twice a week. We started streaming in the finals. Yeah. We'd never done a live stream before. We did one before finals, I You're believe. right. It was right yeah. around 22 yeah. or 3. Yeah, you're right. Um, we got harassed this year. <laughs> do you remember that? We won't mention the guy's name, but um, that I was I saw a comment recently. I, oh, the, yeah. I got a laugh out of that. I'm not yeah. going to lie. It's funny. He, he's back. Um, yeah, I, I won't go into it. But I don't know the recent stuff, but I've seen the last couple of comments with him being lighthearted and I've got a laugh out of him, i got to admit. Yeah, he's an interesting fellow. Yeah. He's an interesting fellow. I know, uh, I won't say too much, but I know that he's, uh, there are certain YouTubers he legally can't talk about. <laughs> That's how much of a character this guy is. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't, remember he did that exposed video on us? Yeah. I watched that video thinking, all right, this guy is a loony. I think some some of the guys on the Discord know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, but he did a half an hour video talking about us. It's been yeah. mostly mostly other people on the Discord who are not even part of Trifford. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember thinking, all right, what's this guy going to say about me? How much of it's going to be lies? And I ended up watching it and thought, you know what? That guy just kind of made himself look like a dick throughout the whole time. Do you remember? It was just yeah. oh, it was just so funny. Yeah, I was cacking um, me Dax for that he, one. He wants to be a guest on the podcast. I think that would be interesting. One. <laughs> but I also don't want to give him what he wants because he wants the, the limelight. This is uh, also if anyone's watching and remembers when, I, when we got dislike botted. Yeah. It was all the same sort of era. But that was funny. The, the reason I brought that up is because I can't believe it was this year. Huh? That feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah, bloody oath. Yeah, so, that felt like early days, that one. Yeah. Um, we started a second channel. Well, I did. You rather. did, yeah. Yeah. Um, which... It's, it's been hard to get off the ground, to be honest with mm. you. Oh, uh, yeah, because it's more general content. So, yeah, competition in the marketplace of people is probably a lot more extensive. Yeah, it's very hard to stand out. Whereas yeah. with True Footy, we're lucky because not too many other people are doing the football yeah. thing. A few more people are starting up, I've noticed. It's starting. We got in pretty early, luckily, I'd say. True. That's it. That was yeah. always the strategy, really, to, yeah. to get in and improve quickly and try and be the best first. Yeah. I wouldn't say we're the best first, but we would have at least made really good progress yeah. um, in the year. Or We've actually been doing it two years now. Um, well, it's the third New Year's Eve. It is, yeah. Party. Yeah, we started in October 2017, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Third New Year's Eve. So this is going into our third year. Um, 
I watched uh, New Year's podcast last year. Yep, you and Louis. Yeah, M- Louis and myself. I uh, watched a bit of both. I watched the one with all four of us and then the one with just you and Louis. <laughs> that one was pretty heinous. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was 26, was our uh, True Footy Podcast 26 was our mm. last New Year's one. So we've done 19 podcasts this year. It was yeah. a solid effort considering we, we all wanted to do one every three or four weeks and yeah, yeah. that's about right. Yeah. Um, probably a bit over almost. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because we, oh. we were doing weekly ones a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is this is podcast forty five. Okay. Last year we said uh, my resolution for the channel was to get a sponsor, <laughs> and here we are, still sponsorless. Uh, the reason I'd say I haven't really tried that hard is because, if I'm honest, I don't think we're at the quality that I'm really proud of yet. To be honest, without mm-hmm. selling a short, I, I don't feel. I feel like in the last few months. More so, it's gotten to the standard where I can actually present it to someone and be like, mm. this is why it's a good business decision for your brand to work with us. The growth, as much as anything, is an indicator. Like, True. Yeah, like True. Our, I guess it really is figures. a numbers game. Yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah. It really is a numbers game. Um, and the other one was have a guest. And we had our first guest three weeks ago. Yeah. or whatever. No, it was a bit more than that. Lenny. Yeah. Maybe eight weeks ago. Yeah, Lenny was a, yeah, a couple of months ago. Lenny was the first guest. And for the same reason, I think it took us so long to get a proper guests other than Brendan and Callum who came on once um, because I wasn't confident that we were going to do a good job in the sense that interviewing people is kind of like like have them overshadow us not not even that just more like imagine if if in True Footy Podcast 3 Luke Shaw is like yeah I'll come on your show (laughs) like we would have had no idea how to interview him Uh, it's it's an art form if you watch mm, like True Geordie for instance he just comes to mind because he's like one of the best yeah they, they've got a plan of how to ask the questions, how to evoke emotions yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm a novice. Like our first time was with Lenny. Yeah. And even still, and watching, I did the pair as well. Um, I did a podcast with yeah. him, brother. Uh, and then we had Christian on as well. I watched, I watched myself in those podcasts and I think, that, that, that bit was good, but that bit was really messy. And I really, yeah. I really want to get good before we get anyone on. That's, that's the honest answer as to why we haven't yeah. approached anyone. And also I'm a bit of a pussy. <laughs> And luckily with Lenny, we well, at least I had the background and I didn't plan a bit of footy with him. True, yeah, you yeah. know Lenny. Lenny, yeah. the good thing about all three of our guests, so Lenny, the pair, and Christian, yeah. they're all terrific speakers, uh, all very professional, and they, I wouldn't say it carried us, but it was more like if I asked a dumb question, yeah. which at times I did, and I kind of stuttered between transitioning yeah. questions, their answer was really long and they knew what I was trying to say. Yeah. And they kind of... I kind of recovered it. So, did you have a favourite guest? I guess you'll probably say Lenny because that was the only one you were involved yeah. with. <laughs> and he's my main guy. Me yeah. and Lenny, the two stars of the forward pocket at North Fremantle, Matt. Yeah, true, true. I yeah. say that ironically, not actual from any sort of actual talent from either of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really liked all three of the podcasts. Actually. Yeah, I enjoyed the, watching the pair and Christian ones as well. Yeah. So the ones, um, the ones, I, I really want to do more stuff like that going into this uh, over the summer. Yeah. So we've done three on my list. I really want to Caden and Cookson if yeah. they'll agree to come on the show. I thought Cooko was sort of half Kane, wasn't he? I thought. You oh yeah, so yeah, he's already there. agreed. Yeah. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah. he's already agreed. Um, but we just I haven't like really nailed him pursued. down. Yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't asked Caden yet, yeah. um, but I intend to. So hopefully he does. Um, he's just hit the 40k subscribers. So. I thought Caden had more. I thought he had like 60, didn't he? No. Oh, no. fair enough. Mm. He's actually just gone full time with the channel, so good on him. Congrats, fucking yeah. Up. yeah, it's awesome. If you can make a living out of it, fucking good on you. That's the dream. Um, so yeah, back out Charizard. He's not really uploading at the moment, but I really want to get him on as well, um, and then eventually transition to players. But um, we can answer some questions yeah. because, as usual, we've um, gone to the pool of Discord yep. uh, for our questions, and um, all the guys who have been fantastic throughout the year. Really want to say a big thank yeah. you now for everyone who's contributed to the channel on Discord. Um, I feel like I say it often, but I can probably always say it more. Yeah, we're um, building a nice fantastic. little community around the channel. For yeah, sure. online community. It's awesome. Um, so Bruce, Bruce, he comes up with the first question. He says, "What are your channel goals for 2020? Do you believe YouTube will bring you enough income to do it full time or not? What are your goals? 10k is probably the simple one to say. 10k for subs. Next year? Is, yeah, I reckon 20." Yeah, ten's easy. It's a safe, easy one. We probably can do at least fifteen. I, I'd like, I'd like to say fifteen's yeah. doable, but ten at a minimum, I'd be like, yeah. that's a legit figure. It's hard. It's really hard. I uh, there was a time where I was thinking ten plus this year was possible because of the, of the we had that big 
patch. Yeah. yeah, it was just effortlessly. Like I was just uploading tips videos and those videos bang just because yeah. the predictions videos and uh, and the, the feedback was all pretty positive and yeah, we were just growing and then it kind of just hit a wall. Um, so it's hard to predict what will happen next year. Yeah. For me, I think I'd love to be at 20K, but yeah. I think quality is really what I want to... Um, to enhance, and I think, uh, who's the next question? Bangers also ask, is there something you're looking to branch into with your YouTube podcasting next, or YouTube slash podcasting next year? I think just doubling down on the stuff we already do yeah, and just improving the quality of it. I really, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to get a real proper camcorder and do better quality live streams. Uh-huh. Um, even get a second USB mic just, just to improve the production a little bit more because we sort of uh-huh. like just on a whim we're just like should we just start doing live streaming yeah we go off our macbook airs yeah. and pros um which is fine yeah. but my I, webcam's allegedly hd allegedly but i think it's yeah. internet as much as anything that could be an issue with the live streams because yeah and as settings. most of our viewers know the internet in australia is fucking shit yeah yeah it's and probably settings on your um on the actual streaming yeah. device as well but yeah um, for obs or whatever yeah that's right so but either way i'd like to imp- improve that production have you ever watched the kickoff with true geordie a little bit. I've also watched Rogan's MMA one, the MMA right. companion one, but he does like Brendan Shaw, Brian Callan, yeah. those dudes. So the kickoff is the one I watch, and yeah. they do like a weekly show. In fact, they do it a couple of times a week, just the big games, three to five yeah. hour live stream sometimes because they've got a couple yeah. of games in a row, and they just talk for nonstop footy, and I would love to do that. Yeah, so, if uh, I was more into soccer, I'd probably go around him because mm-hmm. I have been getting around Geordie a bit more lately. I enjoyed his Tyson Fury podcast because I'm yeah. a big Fury fan. Yeah. Looking forward to that fight as well, actually, next year. Fury Wilder, the rematch. Oh, is it really? Yeah. I know who those guys are. Yeah. <laughs> that's the basis of my, that's the extent yeah. of my um, boxing knowledge other than Logan Paul KSI. <laughs> um, uh, so to answer Bruce's other question, do you believe YouTube will bring you enough income to do it full time or not? So as I said before, Caden yeah. has just hit 40K subs um, and he announced in his video he's going full time. He also does work for the AFL. Yeah. So he does a kid show with the AFL and he and Coco get paid. I presume. So and that, they, that they do official videos for them, like where they did that challenge where they went down and played kick to kick with the goalie and stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So that that would help. So yeah. that's probably why he can do yeah. YouTube full time. But uh, for me, I believe it can. But I think it's going to need a big shift. There's mm. going to be need to be a real big growth in AFL on YouTube. Yeah. I think at the moment it's too limited. I'm thinking it is a little niche, five, maybe five years. Three? Yeah, I'd, I'd give it three. Yeah. Because we, we've made a bit of money, like, we made ad revenue, like, we've made, like, when I tell, like, mum and dad and stuff, like, the ad revenue figures, like, oh, that's pretty good, like, not bad for a bunch of bloody mupp- muppets on the internet. <laughs> we make pocket money, just to clarify, yeah. we don't make a Like, lot a week to week is fuck all, but, like, yeah. it's all added up and it's like, oh, that's a nice little amount in the footy account. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. That's all that is nice at the moment. Nest we, egg. Don't, we don't actually take any money yeah. from it, yeah. we just save it in yeah. account for... Reinvesting probably getting in a camera. Camp, yep. We should start probably spending some of it on. We should. Like, yeah. I reckon it'd be worth doing it. You're right. Yeah. Impromptu true footy meeting in the podcast here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Bruce, that is the goal. I'm thinking of transitioning eventually, hopefully, to a full time YouTuber. But oh, I thought you were going to transition to something else there for a second. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, plans for next year YouTuber guests. Better live streams. Huh? Um, the, the more ambitious ones are maybe a sponsor. A player. And on. a player guest. So that's that's yeah. the tricky one. I think we might be getting to that point where we could yeah. sometimes this year. Yeah. Um, if I say someone I know out and about, I'll get pissed and walk up to them and be like, come on the podcast. <laughs> I did that with Kane Lucas. <laughs> I've told <laughs> you that story. That's the thing yeah. with Kane Lucas. I... Uh, it was that night, I saw him out in Perth, uh, we were having a few beers together, and uh, I got his number, and I was, I was like, yeah, come on the True Footy Podcast, and he goes, yeah, yeah all right, all right, and then uh, he, <laughs> he's friends with Mitch Robertson, and um, I don't know how, I must have brought it up, because Robbo also has a podcast, yeah. and I think he was texting his mate, Mitch Robinson, to be like, and saying like, oh, I know this guy um, who's got a AFL podcast on YouTube as well and just like uh-huh. plugging me and then, I, then he handed me his phone and when he went away I was like True Footy has more subs than you. <laughs> yeah I was like I think that would rub Mitchy Robs the wrong way I never see what a, somebody would reply I was just okay. messing around I was I, I had a few beers in me so yeah. I, I it was not like I wasn't trying to be arrogant but I just thought it would be funny but I never knew what happened after that like yeah. 
Kane Lucas probably looked at his phone the next morning and goes, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I haven't contacted Kane yet. I think no. it would be cool. But it, again, I'm just kind yeah. of a wuss about being a good interviewer and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Bruce also wants to know, what do we have to do to get this goddamn belly dance? And I'm holding you personally responsible <laughs> for this travesty, Busher. <laughs> Wasn't it 10k? Wasn't it was it? 10k. That was the that was the deal. Yeah. What was it? Was it both of us doing a belly dance or just you? I think it was both. Mm. See if we re- if we change it to 20 of oh, those listening. Yeah, we know we made a sort of like deal with one of our yeah. Discord users, yeah. Bruce, that if we hit 10k subs, Busher would do a belly dance. Or well, maybe it was both of us. I think it was both. If we hit 20k, that w- this would be really good. We'll do it so that you have to do it because that'll really motivate me. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, otherwise, I'll just go for 19 and a half. <laughs> just peak at 19 and a half. Yeah. Sounds like me and my projected career earnings earn under 50 grand a year, so I never have to pay me hex back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the real winner there. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the next question is a really good one. Official Tiggy from the Discord uh, wanted to know, who are your top three most wanted podca- podcast guests from the AFL scene? If you had to be anyone. Fife, he'd be an interesting one. Like, even though he's a bit of a introverted dude at times, yeah, might be a bit hard to get dirt out of him. Mm. Mm, buddy, Gross. Clark, I'd be an interesting one. You don't yeah. really hear him talk that much, other than a bit of analysis every now and again on a Fox Footy or whatever. Sam Mitchell, I reckon, would be fun. Yeah. How, oh, yeah. We could get into a few topics. We probably get me Ross Lyon, yeah. mate. One on one, Bush and Ross Lyon. That's a sick idea. Actually, <laughs> Ross Lyon. Uh, for me, on a personal level, Luke Shuey. Yeah, I was just saying. He's the dream. I, I actually Shuey. want to get. Uh, I want to do a new show with Luke Shuey. <laughs> Shuey and the Jess Man. Oh. No, I just made that up. <laughs> but, no, I would love to do like a podcast with the way Mitch Robertson does yeah. it with Sean Tobin. I would love to do do one with yeah. Luke Shuey. Uh, Adam Simpson, another hero yeah. of mine. Um, and Eagles wise, Nat Nui, I feel like would be really interesting. Willie Rioli. Wusha, uh, even as an ex yeah. Eagles, his history. Yep. With the Eagles as a captain and coach. It'd just be an interesting story. And he's a current AFL coach too. Yeah, as well. Um, For for another year. You might be able to get him next year when he retires or however they've decided to frame that. Yes. Yes. Transition. Transition plan. Yeah, Yeah. true. (laughs) Transition. Uh, (laughs) That's uh, that's, that word. Word of the day. changed now, isn't it? Word word. of the day. Um, Other than that, I think Fife is a good one. Other than my own team. Yeah. we just listed all the WA I ones. I think really, even but. an interesting one I just came to mind actually would be Tim Kelly with all the yep. controversy around him with the move from Geelong to West Coast. It would be nice to interview him, get give him an extended form to present his perspective on why he made his decision and all that. Yes. That would be a cool podcast, I think. Yeah, that would be good. Depending how personal he wanted to get, obviously. Is there anyone from the AFM media you'd like to get on? Dennis Cometti is a legend. It would be a great one to just have a yarn with, obviously. Yeah. We kind of had a half link to uh, Callum Toomey there yeah. for a little while. Um, Lucas, I don't want to dox him, um, from the live stream. Uh, he's a cousin of Callum Toomey. Yeah. And he um, tried to organise it prior to the draft, but um, we couldn't quite sort that. But maybe in the future. Yeah, that would have been a good one because there's a few people I think noticed in some of our earlier draft analysis videos. I lean a bit heavily on Toomey until I can oh, yeah. get too deep into my own research. If well, until Prior to I've done my own, I'll probably... Trust what Toomey says until I've looked into it. My own. That's probably the best way of putting it. I'd say. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, like even if you look at his top ten predictions over the past decade, he hit pretty high clip on them from mm. memory. They did the stats. Yeah, yeah. that's right. No, he he is yeah. pretty good. Well, he's the resident yeah. draft guru. Yeah, I think that's what they call it. Yeah. The draft guru. Well, you could say you're the resident draft guru of true footy. It's <laughs> that's a low bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um. Moving on to maybe some AFL 2019 talk. So the season that was. Um, Farmer Toby wants to know, what are your favourite moments from this season? Well, this is probably tying because I believe there was also a best game somewhere in 2019. Yeah. Yeah, I'll sort of tie it all together. Well, especially because I was at this game and he kicked the point right in front of me. Michael Walters against Brisbane. That was the, po- the 45 for wherever he kicked that from was right in front of where I sit. Unpopular Optus. opinion. That is an overrated moment. Yeah, because he didn't kick the goal, give yeah. you that. But <laughs> still, it won the game. That's the main thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have thought, I would have been so much more psyched yeah. when he kicked the goal against Collingwood the week later. I was also going to bring that up. Yeah. That that whole patch was a great like moment, patches, all that. Even though the, I do got to admit, main did touch that. 
Was it mine that touched the Walters one? I think it was mine. Yeah, Someone that's touched right. it. That's right. Someone did that. touch that. Yeah. Realistically, but we got gypped on one earlier that game, I think, so I, it worked out. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Yourself? Um, I've lifted some gen- general sort of league ones. I think the best two games were the two games we live streamed. Yeah, that were Brisbane and Geelong games. was our first ever live stream, and that was an amazing game. Yeah, that was a cracker. And specifically the Lincoln McCarthy mark. That was yeah. one of the probably the hot, best moments of the season, I, I, I genuinely think. There were better marks, I think. but yeah. Sure, but yeah. Uh, yeah, well, Liam Ryan won mark of the year, right? Yeah. Yeah, but in terms of the moment, because yeah. they won them the game, they the, won by one Yeah, it was point. clutch. Yeah, that, and it was top of the table, it was first mm. and second, so it doesn't yeah. really get much better than that. And the following day, Richmond West Coast was up there with one of the better games of the season. Yeah. For me, oh, GWS making the grand final, huge moment. That will be long-lasting in the memory of those fans. Yeah. Uh, and other other people as well. Um, and I also think Cornelio re-signing is a yeah. hugely significant thing for the league. Yeah. Did Whitfield re-sign yet? He did. Yeah. yeah. All so, of them except Cameron, I think. Yeah, now. I think they're alluding to Cameron And Cameron's coming though. soon, I think, by yes. the sounds everyone's saying. Yeah, yeah. And the other one, I think, actually, Zach Williams is the other one. They've still got a re-sign. That's right. Another relatively big name for him. Yeah. But Cornelio signing and then becoming captain, yeah. really significant moment. A little harsh on Phil Davis, I feel. I feel Phil Davis was, was a very good captain. I sure. kind of understand why teams do these transitions. Not yeah. knocking him in, he can still have that role without the formal title. But yeah, Phil Davis, I think, did a great job with that team. Yep. And it's worth noting. Yep, I agree. Uh, what else I got here? Uh, in terms of individual performance, Cripps versus Brisbane was pretty fantastic. Yeah. Remember, he kicked like four goals, had 30-odd yeah. 30 possessions or something Monster like that. Monster clearances, I assume, yeah. Yeah, no, that was uh, that was probably one of the highlights of the season for me. From an Eagles perspective, what was the best moment this year? I had low points. Losing to Haw- Collingwood by one point in Perth and losing to Hawthorne in round 23. That Hawthorne, that should be a low point. That, those two That Hawthorne loss, fuck you, realistically. Those two games may be the worst I've felt after a home and away game in yeah. forever. That Hawthorne game, fuck you, is big time, yeah. I reckon. I mean, you can argue any any of the losses because yeah, were, technically, but but yeah, the you knew what was on the you knew what was on the line going yeah. into that game, and yeah, ultimately like, they shat the bed. Yeah, I knew I knew the season was wrecked. Then mm. that was the difference between the Eagles going to the Gabon round in the week one of the finals. We could have we could have yeah. won that, so it, it, it could have cost. Us and never not yet another crack if you did lose. Yeah, that's worst right. case scenario. That's true. Mind you, we probably would have played Collingwood. No. Who would we have played? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. really bad thinking about it. The Eagles lost. Um, yeah. yeah, what was the best moment for 2019 for the Eagles? Hmm. Probably Nick Nat returning. Yeah. That's... The second time. Because <laughs> <laughs> the first time he came back was... You could say that every year. Shortly. Nick Nat returning. <laughs> Actually, you know what? When the Eagles... His comeback game, I think it was his comeback game, in the rain against Hawthorne at the G, uh. where Cripps kicked the goal with a minute or two to go, uh. and we won. That was oh, yeah, because that was the week before the derby that he came back. Because right. the Derby was his second game, and then it's when they brought Sandlands in for the first game, and I've yeah. lost my shit. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, maybe and then, can... as I predicted, Nick Nat ran rings around him. Yeah, he did. Maybe we can look at some predictions for the next season. Yeah. This is always fun. Just the top four. Should we just go top four? Who are your top four sides going into next year? Oh, actually, we'll start with the first question. This is from Patrick Starr. Who, is the, who will be the toughest team to beat next year? Richmond. Because they not only they've got the talent, they've got MCG factor majority of the time. They're comfortably at home most of the time, whereas West Coast have to travel a bit more. West Coast at Optus probably is harder to beat, but they're only there half the time, whereas Richmond's at the MCG probably three quarters of the time. Yeah, fair enough. I agree. Yeah. Richmond is well, who right. I would have said. It's a really boring answer, yeah. but they've been the best team over the last three years, won two flags. Um I mean, West Coast yeah. was probably better in 2018, but like mm. over the stretch, three years, Richmond. I yeah. Richmond was one bad game away from being in that grand final in 18. Yeah, I guess, yeah. that's true. Exactly. So, yeah, I agree. I'll say Richmond, West Coast, first and second. And that's probably my yeah. predicted grand final. I just, it's hard to, you can't really predict based on rating teams on paper. Yeah. But that's all we have at the moment. Exactly. And I'm going to say Richmond and West Coast are the best two teams. I'll say GWS third. Yeah, hard to argue. The only thing that counts against them is that teams don't do well after years where they get belted in yeah. the final, particularly the grand final. That grand final performance is absolutely pathetic. Anemic. It's yeah. disgusting. Like, that, <laughs> hopefully agree. they don't do an Adelaide. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, Adelaide had a lot of clothing on the list, so does GWS, yeah. so it's hard to predict. But uh, you, you you look at the list and think there's yeah. still so many players coming to the prime. Just as long as GWS haven't had to listen to the Richmond theme song on repeat. Yeah, well. <laughs> so far this preseason. That's true. They haven't got any preseason camps. Who's, who's the next best team? Pies on paper. Fuck, did we just have the, I think we just have the exact same top four. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I had Collingwood. Doggies well. could push for four yeah. this year, I think. Yeah. Doggies are in the frame for sure. It's hard to see them not being in the mix. Yeah. Where does Geelong sit? Just outside that group, but probably if ev- all the planets align, they find a kid that can somewhat replicate what Kelly gave them. They were the second best team this year. Yeah. It has to be said. They were... Mm. Better than GWS over the course of the year. Yeah, and but the it year before that, run. when they had all the talent they did have, it was a year younger. They weren't that crash hot. No, that's true. And they lost in they, Kelly now yeah. and replaced him with Jack Stephen and yeah. a couple of other players. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I have them just outside the four. Yeah. What's your predicted grand final? Richmond West Coast? Probably, yeah. Can't argue with that. Now, I did ask you to prepare a wild card grand final. So I did this same thing with huh? Louis last year, where we predict. On the basis that the grand final is so hard to predict every yeah. year. Most years we don't get it right. Richmond and GWS in hindsight is quite predictable, but Collingwood West Coast wasn't. Yeah. Adelaide, Richmond wasn't. So Western Bulldogs, Sydney wasn't. So if you had to pick two wildcard teams. Doggies, I'll pick as one of my two. And as for the other team, Brizzy. Okay. If Brizzy, everything goes right for them again, they get more. If the kids keep on their projection that they have been on so far, even though these things mm. stagnate and go at different rates obviously but yeah. if they can improve at the same rate they did this year they're a shot to sneak get to get in there yeah you're not wrong and i'll say gws uh, sorry gws bulldogs yeah gws is not really a wild card but yeah i, I was the, gonna the cop out with the gws but i thought it'd be a bit of a cop out if i just said gws who we had it third yeah fair enough yeah i had yeah. to get a bit more wild for you give us a big call prediction Ooh. Tim Kelly Brownlow. Whoa, I would love that. I know you would. And you're going to love mine. I'm going to say Fremantle to surprise everyone and play finals. I like that. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not as optimistic as you are, but I like it. I like where you're going with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just think their list is If the planets better. align, I see the potential there, I will say, but it's going to take a year or two to get everything the way we want it, see how healthy and consistent guys are, get them into some form. Yeah. yeah. The outside run will be a concern this year. Mm. That's that's my worry, but everything else like I don't I really like Brett Bewley actually I got to put it out there like even he got limited opportunities last year some people blame Ross's attitude towards talent for that he was a cracking kick apparently he's like they say this about everyone he's tearing the track down preseason like it's yeah. a cliche but yeah it is sounds like him and he's really doing well do you know who tore up the track for us every preseason Chris Maston. <laughs> Yeah. Mind you, if Brett Bewley, Bewley becomes a Chris Maston, it's not actually that bad, right? Mm. Considering he's just like a rookie pick. So yeah, yeah. But Bewley is a very nice kick. He is. So him That's on true. a wing. Yeah. I hope he can get a spot on that wing and do something with it. Well, he's probably got a bit of a clear path now. Yeah. With some of those guys out. Yeah, it looks like him and Ace are probably the front runners for the two wing spots. I do expect Akers to become a good player too. Yeah. Because he's going to be playing full time midfield now. Yeah, it sounds like he's playing more inside from what I've yeah. heard. That's the way he should have always played. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Saints tried to use him as a bloody Justin West off sticking where you need him type of dude. Yeah. I think Fremantle's back line is their massive strength. We yep. talked about this, and I think Hayden Young is going good enough to come in, and I think he will be close to Rising Star. But I'm actually going to say no. Lockie Ash is my predicted Rising Star. I did like Lockie Ash as well. Do you have a predicted Rising Star? I'll go the cliche, Rao. See, I didn't go Rao because I feel like as a young inside mid at the Gold Coast it's going to be hard for him to tear it up but then again it would have been hard for Sam Walsh exactly same logic yeah I mean he's a bit more outside but still yeah yeah uh, Brownlow e. I did give the wild card Kelly but a more ri- probably oh you did say that my bad that's my wild card E Brownlow but a more probably Brownlow oh I was going to have Fife in the hunt yeah you do Titch might come back with a vengeance and Hawthorne get plenty of wins on the board if they can stay healthy and stuff. Yeah. That's possible. I'll say Cripps. Yeah, Patrick Cripps, he's due. Even yeah. Bont. Yeah. But again, McRae and Dunkley will still vote, so 
that's probably not as viable. If Fife plays a full season, I'll say Fife, but yeah. it's so improbable that he'll play a full season. Yeah. Well, it's not improbable, but it's just yeah. uh, it's a risk. Yeah, I'll, I'll say Cripps. Yeah, uh, yeah. I said Cripps last year too, so. Yeah. You can say Cripps every year and eventually he'll be right, realistically. <laughs> that's true. He'll yeah. get one. That's true. Um, Dylan loves stack. Wants to know which five players will be in contention for Coleman. Jez Cameron, you've got to put there. Ben Brown. Ben Brown, obviously. Buddy Franklin, I still think. A lot of people say he's looking the healthiest he has in a few years. Is so that right? I mean, even without knowing that, I would have said Buddy Franklin's got to be in the mix. In the mix, yeah. Who, who else do I like? For the Tom, Lynch. Uh, Tom Lynch. Tom Lynch. Yeah, yeah. So that's four. Tom Lynch. Danaher? I can't back his health in at this stage, I'm yeah, afraid. That's, uh, that's the only concern. Uh, I'm going to go a cheeky one. Charlie Cameron. True. Was he top five this year? He was, he was close. close. He was very yeah. close. 57 goals yeah. or something, I want to say, which is a brilliant effort yeah. for a small forward. I'm going to put yeah. him in there as a smoky. I'll say Josh Kennedy. Health's the big one. I, I, I was thinking him as well, but health's always... He's the... had his first preseason in three years, and last year he kicked oh. 50 goals or something. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't 50, but it was a bit less, 45 or something. Yeah. Pretty good effort. Yeah, JK is a it fucking freak. It is ambitious. Amb- ambitious. I understand why people yeah. won't have him top five, but I'll, I'll give him a chance because nobody's talking him up mm. and uh, he's having a good preseason. If he has a full season, he's always in with a shot for a Coleman. That's true. He's a fucking jet, that guy. Yeah, he's a freak. Yeah. Dave. Asks, who will make more headlines this season, Joe Danaher or Wusher slash Rutten? It's a good question. Probably Danaher. People, really? I, I think the opposite. I reckon people will buy into the people, the player drama. Everyone loves that sort of shit. Yeah. Everyone's like, ooh, is he going to leave? Every time they have a bad True. game, Danaher wants out. Every time they look good, oh, Danaher might stay. See, that's why I thought the opposite. I thought Wusher and Rutten will get talked about every time Essendon lose. Oh. Uh-huh. Because it sounds like Rat- Rutten's pretty much running the pre-season and Wush is just sitting back in his armchair, giving him a bit of armchair coaching. <laughs> Smoking <laughs> his joke. pipe, so to speak. Yeah, doing a bit of a Gandalf. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird one. I don't know if I like the succession plans. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, even the Goodwood and Ruse ones seems to be a bit hit and miss so far. Yeah, it's a tough one because, well, Goodwin yeah. was really good yeah. in 2018. Yeah. Right. Like, but every other year. <laughs> Isn't it? You've sort of seen the that one that was bad this year. And the first year he came ninth. They missed yeah. because they choked in round twenty three. Yeah, whatever. like they've been on an upward projection, but uh, mm. yeah, yeah, that'll be an interesting one. I don't know. I just think of, is it almost like a, f- a friendly sacking? So to speak. <laughs> that sounds <great>. uh, <laughs> like a kind sacking, a yeah. succession plan. Yeah, we won't sack you this year. We'll protect your legacy. Well, it's because he had one year left on his contract. Yeah. So but it's probably just like not don't. renewing his contract yeah. is still sacking, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. It's it's like a yeah, it's like a kind of sacking. I guess they don't have to pay him out. Yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they're that interested. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. yeah. It's toughy. Final question. Ooh. Bruce wants to us to rank our favourite holiday periods from best to worst: Ooh. Christmas, Easter, birthday, New Year's, Oz Day. So, what's your favourite? Probably Chrissy. Yeah? Because you get the combination of presents, spend time with your family. I, I, I'm, I'm a guy that doesn't mind giving out a few presents, even though I've been a bit short on catch past few years, so I've been actually doing this Christmas bingo thing. <laughs> Rather than buy all my relatives a shit gift, I'll get a couple of good ones and make them play bingo for the honour of a decent <laughs> gift. Is that really your... That's my shtick. Are you the only one that does it? They all love it, eh? Really? Yeah. Like, Arnie Trace for Chuffed. I gave her a $50 gift card for Chrissy. She's bloody chuffed. <laughs> so you didn't even put thought into it. You just got a gift card. <laughs> So they know what it's going to be before they... No. Okay. Yeah. Last year, I think I... Don't know what I did last year, actually. It was gift cards, but it was like not generic ones. It was like store-specific ones. Yeah. So why... Your dad was pretty unimpressed with his $50 Victoria's Secret voucher, though, wasn't he? <laughs> no, I actually got him a Lazy Susan. <laughs> did you actually? Yeah. <laughs> well, because I was bitching about getting food, and I was like, yeah, we'll stick a Lazy Susan in the middle of the table. That'll work good. Fair enough. Yeah. And that could have gone to anyone, or was that deliberately bought for your dad? Well, I sort of... Did combined mum and dad good gifts. Okay. And then my sister bought both of them with soda stream. Oh, there you go. We sort of worked in cahoots. <laughs> what else? What other? What's Chrissy one, one, birthday two, probably. Yeah. I do love getting around myself. <laughs> Gross. Ooh, and then it's a tough one between New Year and Oz Day. I'd probably go Oz Day because I do love the day drinking, even though no longer. I hate day drinking. <laughs> I don't mind it because I can just go to sleep at a reasonable hour and yeah. forget about it. 
I'm going to sound really lame, but I don't, I'm not really much into the holidays, to be honest. So mm. Christmas is nice, but it's tiring a little bit. Yeah. You got a lot of people to see, but mm. everyone's got time off at the same time, which is yeah. nice. My birthday doesn't really mean a lot to me nowadays. It's... Uh, yeah, it's definitely diminished in value as time's gone on the yeah, birthdays. I'm not materialistic. I don't really care about gifts. I almost feel awkward about getting gifts sometimes. Oh. But uh, for me, it's just a nice reason to go out for a birthday. But I mean, yeah. for me, like I work obviously full time. So if my birthday's on a Wednesday night, it just means knock off at five, go to dinner at seven, yeah. have a beer, go to bed early, go to bed, uh, work the next day. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? It's nothing... Yeah, nothing it's not really. like you can hit up cheek on a Wednesday night for the birthday or anything. Yeah, well, no, that's true. Like, Maybe being back anymore. at uni, Mart. True, yeah, you are going to be a bloody menace. Uh, Easter's good because it's got football. And chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Easter's pretty dope, but I, yeah, also, I, don't mind I just would rather just sit down, uh, sit home and play, fo- uh, watch the footy, rather. Yeah. New Year's, I'm working tomorrow at 5.30am. <sighs> yeah. So are you doing, what are you doing tonight? Going to seasons, mate. Seasons. I'm hitting a few sixes at the Wacker. Yeah, right. Also <laughs> playing some cricket. <laughs> 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 actually, who am I kidding? I'll be hitting fours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he means actually punching. Um, yeah, uh, Australia Day is nice, but I I'm yeah. a bit of a wuss for day drinking. I I, I love the idea of it. Start yeah. having a couple of beers by you know twelve yeah. o'clock. By two thirty, I'm ready for bed. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. So I'm at that now. point with the grog these days. Once I get grog in me, like, because you're always more susceptible to like caving into doing shit once you piss. What's so grog's I'm- real name? Is it Peter? <laughs> grog A <laughs> is the formal term. Yeah. But yeah, once I get a few in me, it just makes me just want to go. Yeah, I just want to go home. Mm. Especially if I'm also beer. Yeah, especially if I'm at a bloody nightclub and everyone's just sweating and bloody <laughs> packed in like tins of sardines, I just go fuck this and leave. Yeah, that's it. All right, well that I think comes to the end of the podcast. That was good. Succinct, I like it. Succinct, yeah. Well, it was forty-four yeah. minutes or whatever. Yeah, we've only gone two or three rounds of the camp. Two, two, yeah. yeah. 40 minutes or so. So yeah. that's good. That's the ideal length for yeah. me, so to speak. Bit of yeah. light listening. Yeah. Um, so thanks for everyone for a fantastic year. Hope to bring even more fun and games next year. We're going to be doing a decade in review video straight after this. Yeah. So stay tuned for that on the channel. I haven't decided which one I'll upload first, so yeah. we'll see. Porque no los dos. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. Cool. Thank <laughs> you guys and have a safe new year. Cheers. <laughs>